change. Christy Tolliver signing with Washington in the offseason. Chelsea Gray now the starting lineup, and she is averaging a career-high 15 points per game for Brian Agler. But Coach Agler concerned that his team is not quite communicating the, well, the way he would like it, like them to. Gray with the ball in her hands. Agwumake right away takes it to Glory Johnson and uses her offhand. And clearly that was what Brian Angler wanted them, how he wanted them to start the game. Not only getting Agwumake a touch, but getting her a touch in the paint where she was so dominant when they played the other night. Neka so far fourth in the league and scoring at 21 points per game. Here's Play Songs who can hit from three. And that's guarded by Candace. Megan Smith draws contact and gets it up and in just before the shot clock. Shot clock into single digits now for LA. Essence Carson takes the jump and hits nothing but the bottom of the net. Really nice ball movement on that possession, switching sides of the floor from LA. That is when they are at their best, when the ball doesn't stick and they get good movement side to side. Well, when Essence Carson and Elena Beard are scoring, which they did in that Phoenix win, they're more balanced on the offensive end, and that team is more difficult to guard. Coming off a 10-point win at Phoenix a few days ago, Alicia Gray, who is the highest scoring rookie in the league, missed a couple of times down low, but Glory Johnson gets it a fresh 14 seconds off the offensive rebound. Christmas, Kelly with the miss. Karima like Skylar Dickens getting married in the offseason. Adding a few letters to the back of Hence the, the hyphenating. Christmas Kelly, that's a nice stop, but she was unable to get it, was able to sh get rid of Candace Parker as a defender. Right now, that's three missed layups by Dallas. They can't afford on LA's home floor to miss point blank shots like that. And as Parker doesn't miss, it's a nice feed for Parker's first bucket. And that's great recognition. You know, Candace Parker needs to get into the post more. I thought against Dallas and her matchup against Thornton, she could have went inside and used her size late. So I like the touches for her in the paint. Get her thinking closer to the basket. Lissons from outside off the back of the rim. With China talking about Kayla Thornton, who is from UTEP. We expect to see her soon. Candace Parker from outside. That is her team leading 11th made three of this young season. LA has hit its first four shots from the floor. And it's a 9-2 lead, timeout on the floor. Great start, Neca and Parker getting it done. Well, LA wants to get the ball in the paint to their bigs where they can finish as well as anyone in the league. The athleticism of Gumake and then Candace Parker, you talked about it, LaChina. Get inside, big girl, get inside. ESPN's coverage of the WNBA is brought to you by Verizon. Not just unlimited, Verizon Unlimited. Taco Bell's new naked chicken chips.
ESPN's coverage of the WNBA is brought to you by Verizon. Not just unlimited, Verizon Unlimited. Taco Bell's new naked chicken chips. And Trulia, where you can find the right house and neighborhood for you. Opening night, one month ago today, the Sparks raised yet another banner. Elena Deladon going to Washington, D.C., off to a terrific start. And how about Diana Tarazi now just 29 points away from becoming the league's all-time leading scorer. They play Chicago on Friday night. And the Minnesota Lynx looking like the team to beat. They are perfection at 9-0. I think early in the season, that's been the surprise, is that uh, not that Minnesota has been so head and shoulders above every other team so far. And it has everything to do with the play of Celia Fowles. I mean, she has been fantastic, in my opinion, right now, leader in the MVP race. The rest of the supporting cast aren't so bad either in Minnesota. Oh, God. Yeah. You've got bad. And a lot of older players, but losing in heartbreaking fashion in the fifth game of the finals to L.A. last year. So a little more spring in their step. Rebecca Brunson in terrific shape. And Minnesota right now playing terrific basketball. Spry, Pam. They look spry. Very spry. Do you ever use the word spry to describe a young person, or is it us just to make older people feel better? <laughs> yeah, that's about it. <laughs> yeah. A euphemism for you play well for someone old. Playson's getting inside. Fourth year out of LSU, a lot of playing time because Courtney Paris hurt her knee the end of May, and she is out and will be out for several more weeks. And a whole different look for this Wings team without Paris. Playson's brings some nice things on the offensive end because she's a stretch five, opens up the floor for drives, and. You saw her get to the offensive glass. That's one thing Fred Williams said they're going to need tonight, those second opportunities. That's one of the things that can be an equalizer on the other team's home floor, but you got to play a little bit of defense first. Got to be some help there. And speaking of veterans who are spry, Elena Beard slashing in for her first bucket of the night. You see L.A. switching up how they're playing ball screens. They trapped on the last possession. They're hard hedging. Brian Adler wants to see a sense of urgency on the defensive end. And you know that the defensive sense of urgency starts with Elena Beard. But here she is on offense just going to her strong hand, which is her left hand. And you know that's where she wants to get to. Help defense doesn't rotate over. Averaging over 10 points per game, two in a row now for Plaisance. Well, good things are going to happen when your guards can get dribble penetration, get a touch in the paint, because it forces the defense to collapse and help from somewhere else. And Dallas forcing the turnover. You know, China, you talked about L.A. switching up the defensive coverages on the pick and roll. Dallas exhausts the pick and roll, especially from the wing spot. We'll probably see another one right here. Now it's a double screen. You have to be able to figure out multiple ways to defend it. And they love when Alicia Gray's coming off of that screen to her left hand. It's one of their go-to from the wing in the pick and roll situations. And perhaps trying to get into the Plaisance once too often, it's knocked away. I think they're going to get Plaisance for the foul, and she is shaken up. We see early in this game, Fred Williams putting Teresa Plaisance around the basket more often. I mean, we see her on the pick Both and pop, and she likes to ball. hang out around the perimeter, but they're looking to get her more high percentage looks off of the dribble. So the foul on Plaisance on this play. Oh, man. And Fred Williams, the head coach for Dallas, has just been called for a technical foul, complaining about that. You saw there was some contact. There was a lot of contact, yeah. and I don't understand why it was why it was on the offensive player instead either. of the defensive player. I can understand his frustration there. Sends Carson to the line where she hits the free throw. She's now 13 of 15 from the line for the season. Fred in his fourth year with the Tulsa slash Dallas franchise. And you see the only playoff appearance coming a couple of years ago with Tulsa after this team had such great success as the Detroit Shock. Dre decides to drive. She looked like a running back right there, cupping the ball on her right side and then finishing her left in, uh, with contact. And she did that so well in their win over Phoenix. I mean, 
we know her as a player that makes outstanding passes. She is a, a fair three-point shooter, but she's gotten more quickness off of the bounce, which is going to create more opportunities for her teammates on the offensive end. She had a team-high 24 points in their last game against Phoenix. Beard's turn to drive. They're not stopping them. The balance offensively right now for LA is very good, and I mean the, the balance of their pace. They're not taking quick shots. They're not letting the ball stick. They have a really nice rhythm on the offensive end right now. In fact, they have hit all seven of their shots, and all five of the players they put out there have scored at least two points. So now the lead is 10. Brian Agler's team off to a really good start. And a lot of the success coming in with drives to the paint. Elena Beard with two. The same thing, dribble entry, Elena screen, can, bringing Candace across. Okay, now look, if they jump, look, if they jump it like they have been. Okay. Start on top. Okay. She's fearless. I like that she can handle the ball at that size, can shoot the ball, but she makes plays for everyone. I'm She's fearless. I like that she can handle the ball at that size, can shoot the ball, but she makes plays for everyone. I mean, when she's not shooting well, she still has 12 plus rebounds, seven, eight assists, three blocks, three steals. She controls the game no matter if she's making shots or not. So when she's making shots, she's the best player in the world. So it's definitely a compliment to me to be compared to her. Well, Kevin Durant just off his first NBA championship talking about Candace Parker's game. Lori Johnson has not taken a shot yet, but she drew the foul. And Chelsea Gray picks it up as she was trying to Draw the charge. Let's take a look now at the numbers between KD and CP. Yeah, very similar in terms of where they've been and what they've accomplished in their careers. And we were talking before the broadcast about the similarities in their game. There's so many, but I do think that Candace Parker has the edge on the handle and the footwork. Now, KD is a, his shooting is superb, but I, I think Parker may have him on the, on the handle and a little bit of that footwork we just saw in the video. And I think Kevin might agree with you. He says it's an honor for him to be compared to Candace Parker. Shot clock going to tick down before Christmas. Kelly has a chance to get a shot off. And it's been ugly offensively for Dallas, but it's even been worse on the defensive end. Three straight turnovers by Dallas. But L.A. right now shooting 100%. You wonder how soon will Fred Williams come in with Kayla Thornton. She's a post player who brings a lot of energy, is disruptive on that end of the floor, because right now they need something to disrupt L.A. Well, how many wide open layups did Elena Beard get going to her left hand, her strong hand? That's just knowing personnel and, and scouting report. Yeah, she's been left-handed for a long time. Yeah, I think so. Diggin Smith also a lefty. That's a tough shot that will not fall. And Dallas's offense stuck on six points. Dallas is a team that really gets some of their offense from their defense. And so getting stops on that end of the floor are important. And once again, a drive right down the lane. And Skylar Diggins went for the steal. And Gray makes her play. Dallas right need, now needs to have better one-on-one -on -one defense out on the perimeter. And then on their second line of defense, they need to have better help defense. You see Thornton will be coming in now. Good finish by Gray. Yeah. But it's the defense right now is not on point from Dallas. And that was really an area of focus from them for them from last year to this year. Last year, they were the worst defensive team in the league in terms of points per game given up, field goal percentage defense. It's slightly better this year. And that's why I thought, and I think we all thought, they were going to try to draft possibly Elena Coates. Obviously, she wasn't available when that time came around, but I thought they needed a big. They're without Ruth Hamlin. They needed someone at the rim that could contest shots and help on their back line of defense. 
Kayla Davis can't get it to go. Great effort by Glory Johnson to keep that ball alive. And then Davis just got it taken away as she tried to drive the lane. Dallas shooting under 30% for this game and down a big 13 points. Sonia Chong also in the game for Dallas. Look at that ball movement. And Carson couldn't get it to go. Odyssey Sims, who played in Dallas to begin her career, has checked in for Los Angeles. So Jantel Lavender, number 42 in gold, the sixth player of the year last year. Johnson with a one-handed rebound. Lori Johnson with season-high 24 points when these two teams played in Dallas a few days ago has yet to take a shot. Has the ball now, briefly. Thornton from outside can't get it to go. Dallas has not scored now in the last three minutes and 15 seconds. Let's go back to Fred Williams' last huddle. Okay, whatever you do, defensively, you gotta play slide defense and you gotta play help defense. Quit hugging your players to help your teammates out, okay? Other than form, be aggressive. Let's go 33. Make something happen, let's go. As we've been talking about there, Fred Williams said you've got to help your teammates. Too much hugging going on defensively and wide open drive to the, late, to the lane. Chantel Lavender left open. L.A. scored the last 10 points. And they just can't get anything to fall. A lot of spin for Davis. And here's Parker working on Thornton. Fred Williams liked Thornton on that defensive matchup. And then Christmas Kelly with the rejection. Davis stops and another one and done for Dallas. Well, if they can hit a couple shots, that's going to help their defense. L.A. is so good in transition. They can spread the floor and they have mismatches. So if you don't get matched up the way you want to with L.A.'s personnel, it's going to be tough to defend them. Tonight, even when they are matched up with personnel, it's been <laughs> tough to defend them. Shot clock violation. One season ended last night, and the next begins next week with the NBA draft from Barclays Center in Brooklyn, Thursday at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Boston has the number one pick, Lakers second, Sixers third. You can also watch every pick as they stream live on the ESPN app. That is coming up. A week from Thursday. Markel was at the WNBA draft as well, supporting his fellow Husky, Kelsey Plum, when she was the number one pick. Good pick by Odyssey Sims, who took it away from Sonia Chong. She can really make this team better when she is playing well and applying that kind of defensive pressure. We talked about the major changes to this roster. Yes, you lost Christy Tolliver, but you gained a defender that can put pressure on the basketball like Odyssey Sims right there, gets the steal, lays it up, and she just has a quickness factor in the backcourt that they have not had up until this point, which allows Ryan Agler to have some flexibility on both ends of the floor. Yeah, she sprained her ankle, missed a couple games. Seems like she's still trying to find her groove and get back, but she's looked solid tonight. Sims has come off the bench in every game this year, and she just got pounded a little bit, didn't she? <laughs> Kayla Davis looking at the official saying what? When she absolutely raked the arm, like there was no question that that was a foul on the drive. Kayla Davis with a couple of fouls now, and she is 0 for 3 from the floor. I mean, you got to take a look at the reach in when she goes in. I mean, <laughs> she gets her yeah, right in the elbow. She's locking arms with her there. What? Me? <laughs> she felt that ball. She was like, up, oh, all ball, but the arm. Laquana Williams coming in for Essence Carson for LA. Williams along with Sims trying to work their way into a rotation for Coach Agler. Well, you know, we were talking to Brian Agler this morning about uh, Dallas' ability to come back in, in that fourth quarter when they played on Friday, and he said, I have to be better with my bench. You know, at this time of the game, second quarter, third quarter, and so you see a more concerted effort of that tonight. Lavender in the game, Williams in the game. 
Dallas able to outscore LA by 13 to come from behind to win. Outscored them by 13 in the fourth quarter to win that game on Friday. You know, going back to your point about LA, Rebecca, it's interesting looking at what they did last year. They didn't use their bench really at all, you know, and we kept saying, okay, is this going to catch up with them? But the chemistry of their starting unit and plus, you know, Lavender, I would say, was so good. And, and I do believe that when your team is struggling like L.A. has a little bit here early, get your core unit strong and get them on the same page, and then you can build out from there. Brian Agler, the only coach in league history to win a title with two different teams. And Chelsea Gray really coming on in the playoffs. We were actually here for sort of her coming out game last year when Minnesota pounded them, but Gray played very well. Yeah, and they had Gray too as well coming off the bench because they had Talbot at that right. point. Stay back, stay back. So Chelsea stay Gray back. taking advantage of that opportunity to start, now getting a, a break over on the bench. Sean got it blocked on the perimeter by Sims. And it has been all LA in this quarter. Williams, nothing doing. Raquana has struggled on the offensive end of the floor. Brian Agler hoping she can find her shot, find her energy defensively as well. Shooting just 19% from the floor to start the season. And another blunder by this Dallas offense. Dallas shooting just four of 16 from the floor. Sparks at 67%. Johnson going to jump against Williams. Lori with the big height advantage. And that is a shot clock violation. And one second left in the quarter. Enough time for a catch and shoot. Neka Agumake ready to inbound it. Reflected away. And there's still half a second left. Still catch and shoot. Yes. Doesn't have to be a tip quite yet. That's at point two. Now Beard's going to throw it in. Candace Parker not in the game for L.A. There you go. And there goes the first quarter. It was all L.A. As they lead it 23 to 8 after one quarter. interview brought to you by Kaiser Permanente. I am here with Dallas Wings head coach Fred Williams. Coach, points have been hard to come by in this first quarter. What do you need to do to score more? We need to put the ball in the basket. I mean, we left a lot of points around the rim uh, early and it helped them to get out to a lead on it. So we just got to finish. L.A. shooting well from the field. Where is your biggest concern on the defensive end? It's dribble penetration. You know, we just let them drive through the lane and not getting backside help. And we told them to rotate over. So you know, the second half, uh, second quarter here, we got to do that. Unless this is going to be a runaway game. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. It's time for our coaches interview brought to you by Kaiser Permanente. I am here with Dallas Wings head coach Fred Williams. Coach, points have Really toughen up here and good solid action right there. <laughs> Offensively, the other end, it's just a matter of us just playing. Okay? Don't be timid of what you're doing. Just play. They're going to trap her every time. 
So what you got to do is widen it out, come behind, get it out, or go. Welcome back to L.A. It's time for our coaches interview brought to you by Kaiser Permanente. I am here with Dallas Wings head coach Fred Williams. Coach, points have been hard to come by in this first quarter. What do you need to do to score more? We need to put the ball in the basket. I mean, we left a lot of points around the rim uh, early, and it helped them to get out to a lead on us. So we just got to finish. L.A. shooting well from the field. Where is your biggest concern on the defensive end? It's a dribble penetration. You know, we just let them drive through the lane and not getting backside help. And we told them to rotate over. So, you know, the second half, uh, second quarter here, we got to do that. Unless this is going to be a runaway game. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. And not a good start to the second quarter. Yeah, obviously not what you wanted with the shot clock running down. But another telling sign in that first quarter, Dallas did not get to the free throw line at all. And you saw just then they didn't get a paint touch. They've got to find a way to turn the corner, get a paint touch, whether it's get to the free throw line or we saw si Skylar Diggins in that first quarter a couple times, draw the defense and kick. Well, and listening to Fred Williams, you know, I immediately started to think about you. You know, when you're young, you're not communicating defensively about what you're doing. And what a catch and play by Neka Agumake. That is just sheer athleticism there by Neka. What an outstanding catch and a great pass here. Over the top by Jantel Lavender. And the backdoor cut. You set it by a great back screen, and that's a, you see a lot for L.A. And when they come out of timeout situations, or we saw it to start the game and now to start the second quarter, Brian Agler runs things to get last year's MVP a touch in the paint. L.A.'s biggest lead in the night now at 26 to 8. And Neka Agumake, the MVP last season. Field goal percentage down a little bit as she almost set the record held by Tamika Raymond. Yeah, her field goal percentage had nowhere to go but, but down, down a little right. bit. I mean, it was so off the charts ridiculous last season. Now a blocking foul coming up on Elena Beard. So it was a 23 to 8 first quarter lead. That's 15 points. But Tulsa, excuse me, Dallas, I knew I was going to say that tonight. Dallas also was down big when they played last Friday before they came back to win. But well, this is uh, not looking pretty. Well, one thing that Fred Williams told us about that matchup was that he felt like that first quarter was too fast. They let L.A. get out and get up and down too much. And they've controlled pace in this game, too. Now, Dallas can get up and down. But when they're not in a rhythm and they're not getting stops and they're not making easy shots, then that pace can get dangerous because L.A. can put a lot of points on the board. Last possession, a good one, though. What'd they do? They got in the paint on a drive and they got to the free throw line. They have not scored a, a bunch and having turnover problems. Neka Agwumake getting inside. She's a handful. She's a handful for any big in this league to try to defend her. So skilled, great footwork, great athlete. And she always plays under control. You can't speed her up. She knows what she wants to do. She reads the defense well. She finishes. Chong from the outside. How it, about Sanaya Chong, the third round pick? She has really played solid minutes so far this season for Dallas. Man, she hit a, a clutch three-pointer late in the fourth quarter against L.A. in Dallas that I just thought when you come off the bench, you haven't had a lot of touches, but she was ready for that opportunity. Lavender very rarely misses when she's given that much space and time. And you know if she's setting the screen, she's going to be looking to pop more than she is to roll, and that is her shot. So hard to recover on screens for L.A. because of how they can spread the floor. John going right up against Elena Beard. And, you know, LaChina, you mentioned the big three that she hit. She played a lot of important minutes in that game on Friday when they beat L.A. She was in for a lot of the fourth quarter, clearly gaining the trust of Fred Williams. And she's been a nice little spark here for L.A. to start this second quarter. I'm sorry, for Dallas to start this second quarter. Coming off a career-high 10 against Minnesota. There's the seven points she had on Friday. Let's take a look at the WNBA's national TV schedule coming up on Sunday, June 18th. 
Yes. About a triple header starting with Dallas at Washington. Phoenix will be right here in Los Angeles. And then San Antonio, Seattle at 3, 5, and 7 Eastern, respectively. And the next ESPN 2 game will be Washington and Minnesota, June 23rd at 8 Eastern time. Elena Deladon going into St. Paul. I've really enjoyed watching Washington come together on the offensive end. Obviously, Elena Deladon has been fantastic to start. Christy Talders finding her way. Ivory Latta has given them a punch off of the bench as well. Okay, so now Lavender said, forget the pop, I'm gonna roll. <laughs> of course. The beautiful she feet heard from what Elena she said. Beard. Lavender with six points off the bench, which is right around her season average. Ninth game of the year for Los Angeles. Alicia Gray gets one to fall. That was pretty good help side defense from Chelsea Gray to stunt in on the driver, but just couldn't recover quite in time. And cool, calm, and collected. As always, the rookie, Alicia Gray. She was the rookie of the month in the WNBA in May. And going back to that last possession, Dallas right here with enough dribble penetration to draw help, and then the lefty, Alicia Gray, Knocks it down. Timeout on the floor. LA leading Dallas 32 18. This has got it. Jantel, get uh, Chelsea open. Hit. Essence, come right here. We're going to reverse the NECA. You're going to come right here. You can even back screen a little bit here. Rubber off. Essence, you're going right to the block. Okay? It's coming from Chelsea to you to Elena. Okay? Let's do I know I had my mom with uh, Diana Taurasi because that, that was my, that's my favorite player. Uh, so seeing her like walk out in one more, so I can remember just. Time for tonight's right combination brought to you by State Farm in Dallas with a couple of former South Carolina teammates who are making a big impact as rookies. Alicia Gray and Kayla Davis, one, two in both of these respective categories, averaging over 20 points per game as a tandem. And earlier today, we talked to them about their really uh, big moment when they were playing in the WNBA. I know I had my mom with uh, Diana Taurasi because that, that was my, that's my favorite player. Uh, so seeing her like walk out in one more, so I can remember just looking down and I'm like, wow, I'm about to play against Diana Taurasi. So it was, it was pretty cool being on the same court as her. You know, even for me, just getting to play against Candace, you know, I've, I've watched her so much. You know, I've watched her from high school and, and um, you know, just seeing her journey and, and now I guess kind of being able to be a part of it is, is cool. And, and just one more kind of, I guess, our story of growing up together that, um, you know, we kind of get to put in our book a little bit. We really enjoy talking to those two. And, you know, 
They're fearless. That's the one thing that I noticed, not only in our conversation with them, but watching them on the floor. They may say they're in awe of the players on the court, but they are very unbothered in their approach to the game. And, you know, they credit their preparation at South Carolina, obviously winning a national championship. And Don Staley, it, 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 she played that way and, and she coaches that way. No fear. Both of them had a year of eligibility left, but decided to enter the WNBA draft after they transferred. Georgia Tech was where Kayla, Kayla Davis started and from North Carolina to South Carolina for Gray. And both of them are going back to school to finish their degree. They're going to finish up in December. And it was funny because I saw Kayla Davis's dad a, a week or so ago. And he said, uh, he how, talked about how proud he was that his daughter was going back to get a degree. And uh, as you see, Skyler Diggins drive in and, and get to the free throw line. And then Kayla told us, she said, you know, my dad was telling me to go overseas. That's what he thought I should do. She said, but then when, when, when he realized that was my decision, he said, oh, okay, I, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. So it's funny to hear the two different <laughs> sides of the same story. Very admirable that those two young women are, are choosing to put their education first. Davis, so the, the two rookies, the two highest scoring rookies are off to a very rough start. Kayla has yet to score 0 for 3 from the floor, and Gray just 1 for 4 for 3 points. Dick and Smith gets both free throws. One of the things that happens is, you know, teams start to watch you more. They, they understand your tendencies. WNBA coaches are very good at scouting, so they take away what you like to do. But Fred Williams said he's been trying to limit those players, take a little bit off of them, understanding they're coming off a long college season. Lori Johnson has not taken a shot. Dagan Smith gives it up to Skyler, who puts it home. One of the few easy looks Dallas has gotten that hasn't just come from the free throw line. What was once an 18-point lead is now down to 10, and Brian Agler wants to stop the 7-0 Dallas run. Dallas with a good comeback when they played a few days ago and trying to pull it off again in L.A. We will take a timeout. Bobby, what was the score at the quarter? 23 to 8. So we've been outscored. Um, 14, 14, 12, 14, 14. 14 to what? 14. Nine, 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 nine. Getting beat. Same thing down there. Yeah, we won the first quarter. Then he beat us the next three. Because we're too loose. We're not ready to guard. Flipping passes around. We're not working to get open. Not finishing strong at the rim. Also, the Los Angeles Sparks Driven to Hope program, presented by Equitrust, provides underprivileged youth an opportunity to develop more social and leadership skills. We're going to go twirl right here. Get it inbounds. Okay? Get it inbounds. So we're going to catch it. What's the top shot clock? 20 seconds. Get open, hit the elbow. This person going out the backside. So give me Chelsea taking the ball out of bounds. Okay? Chelsea taking it out. Essence, you catching it right here. Essence, hit the elbow, go. Red action, Elena. Red action, Chelsea.
We are back in Los Angeles. The Sparks now with a 10-point lead over Dallas as we play in the second quarter. And it was one week ago tonight, the sudden and tragic passing of NBA Vice President of Broadcasting, Todd Harris, who was someone that all of us got to know very well as, as we were uh, fortunate enough to work with Todd. And he leaves behind his wife, Jackie, and his children, Mason and Logan. And uh, that is the reason why we are wearing these orange ribbons tonight in honor of Todd, who was a, a great, just a great guy. You know, we get to, to get a chance to meet him and know him over the course of the last 15 years. A kind, genuine, funny man was always there to greet us with a smile. And he will definitely be missed. Only 47 years of age, and we lost him a week ago tonight. And certainly all our condolences going out to his family. And just a lovely man. Yeah, one thing that stands out to me, you know, I saw a lot of WNBA players posting pictures of them with Todd. He was always there. Every big moment with this league, everything that happened of significance, he was there. And, and the players really appreciated him just being the great guy that he was and all that he did for the WNBA. Alicia Gray knocking down the three. Dallas fighting their way back into this in this quarter, not missing a shot until right then. Now Candace Parker back into the game for LA, wearing the orange sneakers this month. Yeah, she wanted to wear her orange sneakers. Obviously, the month of June significant, not only the birth date of, of Pat Summit, but also her passing last year in June. So Candace wearing the Lady Vol orange. And then getting a monstrous block. Going behind the back. But it doesn't end well as she throws it away. Lady Vol going against another Lady Vol as Glory Johnson comes in. Great reaction. Beautiful block by Candace Parker right there. That was all paw. She didn't get any foul on that one. Candace has been doing a great job of shot blocking on the defensive end, contesting shots to start this WNBA season. She's fourth in the league, 1.7 blocks per game coming into this one. Barrett from the outside, Alicia Gray with her second three of the night. And that's one thing about youth, but also about this Dallas Wings team in general is that they're unfazed. They've been down in games. They have a knack for climbing back, especially in the fourth quarter, really relentless throughout the course of the game, no matter how far they get down. Chipping it down to single digits after trailing by as many as 18. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a step through. That's split in the double team <laughs> right there. How about that? How did a big 6-4 Candace Parker find her way through there? Gray feeling it. Back to back threes. Ice cold, right? She's got so much poise. We talk about it almost every game of hers that we call. She just doesn't show a ton of emotion, but man, she gets the work done. And it's when she scores her baskets. We saw that in South Carolina. It's whenever they need it. It's when, you know, things are getting dry or even sometimes in the tight moments. That's when she's there. Oh, and that's a nice up and under for Chelsea Gray in the double figures. And Chelsea Gray couldn't have made that move two years ago. She has gotten into great shape. She's changed her nutrition or working out. She's more light in her feet, on her feet. So this is how you step through a double team. You got two players right there. <laughs> she just goes right through. And on the other end, the rookie. Man, you talked about it. Just ice cold three-point line. The lefty just goes back. All right, yeah. just another day, another shot, another day. And I'm surprised LA went under the screen on Gray there. You cannot go under on her because she can get hot from long range. Again, Smith gets hacked on the way to the basket. You know, you notice this run by Dallas started with Skylar Diggins. I mean, it's crazy to say, but at this point in her career, she's a veteran on this particular team. And so she got comfortable. She got to the line. She scored a couple baskets, and that helped her team to relax. She's the leader of this team, and especially on the road, it really starts with her aggressiveness. And that was one of the big reasons they won the first game was their ability to get to the free throw line. And for the first time this year, WNBA players and media We'll join fans in selecting the Verizon WNBA All-Star 2017. Fan voting tips off at 2 Eastern time on Tuesday, June 13th. That's today. And concludes Thursday at 9 Eastern time. WNBA.com or the WNBA app. You can also vote for up to 10 players per day on Twitter and Facebook. That's the social media. So that'll be fun. Other people getting involved. 
I, get, I get to vote, Pam. Do you get to vote? Actually, shockingly, they asked me to vote. They asked you to vote? Yeah, how about that's how low oh, they, mine, the bar is going. Mine doesn't mean as much anymore. <laughs> well, we all get to vote because we're all fans, right? I mean, <laughs> that's true. There you go. <laughs> we all get to vote. <laughs> Neck has got nine. And Diggin Smith in her fifth year already out of Notre Dame. That's Gray's first miss after she hit her first three threes. Coming in, she had only hit 22% from distance. And Gray gets the steal. Glory Johnson's first shot attempt goes down. How about Alicia Gray stepping up, not only on the offensive end, hitting big shots, but she defends as well. But this is what has to frustrate Brian Agler. His team was so crisp, especially offensively, in that first quarter. Not so much here in the second. Not the same kind of ball movement. Not the same cuts through the lane. Well, he went to his bench, you know, and tried to extend the minutes and, and give some trust to his supporting cast. But sometimes that's all it takes in a team like Dallas that can put up a lot of points in a little bit of time to close the gap. And that's Kayla Thornton, of whom we spoke earlier, out of UTEP, where she came out of college in 2014, did not play at all. Last year, she played a few games with Washington. And the three has really helped Dallas get back in this. You see the defense, perfect defensive possession. You talk about taking away the drive. That's exactly what Dallas did, but a tough look right there by Gray. Dallas five for six on threes in this quarter. They're only down by five, had trailed by as many as 18. Carson answers. Essence Carson playing with a lot of confidence in her shot to start the season, shooting well from the field, which again, just gives you more offense for Brian Agler. Corey Johnson jacking up a three. Neca gets it up to Candace and gets it into the hands of her point guard. You can tell based on the release of Glory Johnson's shot that that's not the biggest part of her game. Pick and roll on Agumake got hit by Diggins Smith. Skyler's first foul. Will McKay heads to the free throw line. Neck has had six 20 point games already this year, six of their eight. It was interesting listening to Neko Gumake on a WNBA call. She is, she understands as a leader the responsibility of not only herself, but also her teammates. You know, she took responsibility for rebounding, and Elena Beard stepped up and took responsibility for her team on the defensive end. This is a very mature veteran group that understands their roles, and they challenge each other in those areas. Most teams would be fortunate to have one leader like Akul McKay or Beard, and LA has a couple of them. Very selfless, hard workers. And the lead, which was once five, is back up to nine. Chelsea Gray, the left side of the lane has been there for her. Attack mode. I noticed just a different level, a different sense of urgency about Chelsea Gray on the offensive end this season. Thornton got bottled up. And a lot of contact underneath. That's a charge on Glory Johnson. That's a fun matchup to watch. Such great athletes, those two beings. Coming up on the WNBA halftime report as we take, we see uh, Neko Rumake drawing the foul. The Tarasi milestone, Diana Tarazi is creeping up to be the all-time leading scorer in the history of this league. 29 points away, weekend wrap as well. Chris Cotter and Swin Cash will your, your be in the studio. Husky? My favorite Husky. <laughs> Had quite a career. Can I say my favorite Husky was Tamika Williams? To make the rain. That's a good choice. Chelsea Gray. You're right, man. She just looks like a totally different player. And that's when she likes to take shots. As the clock is expiring, time is winding down. In the biggest moments, that's when she's at her best. Shot clock off. 
Diggins Smith puts it up. And Los Angeles finishes the half on an eight nothing run. Dallas had gotten it down to five, but LA finished strong. Stay tuned for the WNBA halftime report presented by State Farm coming up right after these messages.
higher truth and let it set you free we undeniable we undeniable
your truth and let it set you free. We undeniable. We undeniable. Los Angeles, California. Second half about to begin. The Sparks leading the Wings 48-35. LA has led from the very beginning in this game. And Ward along with Rebecca Lobo and LaChina Robinson. Neko Bumake, the MVP from last year, playing very well tonight. Hasn't missed a shot. Yeah, and Brian Agler runs things to get her looks at the basket. We saw it to start the second quarter. They've got such great spacing on the offensive end that if you set her a back screen, the defense is hugging Elena Beard on the post. It's still a tough shot, but she's able to finish it. And I also like the contributions of Chelsea Gray. She's now full-time at that point guard position. She only missed one shot with six for seven. Her aggressive mindset, Dallas has to do something about her as well as Candace Parker. Yeah, Parker has been terrific as we take a look at tonight's block of the night brought to you by Exxon Mobil, and it's Candace. Just taking it away from Glory Johnson. Now you take a look at the leading scorers. Alicia Gray started out cold, but has hit 3-3. Three, three. Sanaya Chong with more contributions off the bench. Yeah, Sanaya, Sanaya Chong brought good energy on the offensive end. She attacked the basket, got to the free throw line, hit a three. And they're going to need a lot of energy here in this second half. Dallas is to continue to try to cut into this lead. Yeah, a couple things that I really like. Dallas, as you mentioned, getting to the free throw line. They didn't get there at all in the first quarter. Got there eight times in the second quarter. And then they were seven for 14 from the field in the second quarter after shooting only 24% in the first quarter. So they started to relax. And I really think Skylar Diggins is the player that has to get them going. One big problem is that Los Angeles shot 68% from the floor in the first half. If it wasn't for the three ball, Dallas would really be trailing. Chelsea Gray. Once again, it was made available because of the drive by Neka Ogwumike. So every quarter has started with LA making sure that she's involved offensively. You can tell they're more intentional on their offensive possessions in their last couple games than they were to start the season. Karima Christmas Kelly, second leading scorer on this team, has not scored in this game for Dallas. And an empty trip. Beard got Diggins Smith's back turned and sliced on in. And that's what hurt Dallas early in the game, the dribble penetration. I thought they did a better job in the second quarter of closing the gaps and crowding in the lane, but right there, Beard once again. 13-0 run now for L.A. Broken by Glory Johnson after the giveaway. Johnson just two of five from the floor after she had a season high 24 points against L.A. when they played a few days ago in Dallas. McCool McKay doubled by Plaisance. And Neca got the mismatch underneath, and Parker found her. That's that chemistry continuing on from last season between Parker and Ogumike. I don't know that I've seen a post combination that does more facilitating on the offensive end than those two. Parker averaging almost four and a half assists per game. Beard all over the place, forcing the turnover again. And here's Neca in the open court. Johnson stopped her momentarily and then blocked her shot. Deegan Smith found a little daylight against Beard, scored it, and has a chance at a three-point play. Skyler shaking up a little bit. LA on their run, just getting good balance. It started with a drive and crick. Gray really shooting well for the three-point line so far this season. Well, and it starts with the dribble penetration you mentioned. Now, on the dribble penetration, that possession, you saw the pass. And right there, Elena Beard looking aggressive, gets to the rim. And then that combination of Parker and Ogumike, that chemistry, that understanding of where they are on the court and how to get high percentage shots between the two of them. Parker picked up the foul. Skyler into double figures, had a season-high eight assists when they played a few days ago. And uh, Fred Williams said he thinks that Schuyler likes to play teams like, like Los Angeles, especially in L.A., in the big city. She had a great game a season ago against L.A. here. 
Parker over Johnson. I am all about Candace Parker getting touches in the post. Again, going back to that game that they lost against Dallas, I felt like she was too perimeter oriented. And Candace has said herself, I'm not just a shooter, I'm a scorer. And she has to be able to show that versatility throughout the course of the game. Alicia Gray gets her first non three point shot of the game. That count has in the post for you. What a great run out. I mean, how many big 6 4 can get end to end as quickly as Candace Park? And it was a great outlet pass to her. Diggins challenging Parker, who thought she got a block. And that's a good decision by Skylar Diggins. When you get Candace Parker in front of you on help, and she wasn't even all the way in front of her, nope, she didn't get her shoulder square to attack her. What a terrific pass by Chelsea Gray in the outlet. And that was on a fake. So they inbounded, and Candace Parker still able to beat the defenders down the floor. And even though we've been seeing a lot of scoring from Chelsea Gray, that's still the part of her game that I love the most. I remember she was at Duke, and she was throwing basketballs into the stands because her teammates weren't ready for the type of passes she could make. She's a Magic Johnson really tight player. She said she watched him a lot growing up, where she likes to the no looks. and. Passes like that, it's really fun to watch. Magic, one of the part of the ownership group of the Sparks, so now she gets to see him <laughs> right. up close and personal. And he's even said a time or two that he sees some of himself in her game. Skyler hey. driving and getting fouled again. What a great job by Skyler Diggins to go and seek that contact. She went into the body. Her goal here was not just to finish, it was to finish and get the foul. First one on Essence Carson. I mean, take a look right here. She goes into Carson. She's looking for the contact. Because not only does she get to the free throw line, that tags another foul on an L.A. Sparks defender. Well, and Skyler didn't feel comfortable doing this last season. She told us uh, when we had their game in Dallas that, you know, if she can take contact and feel confident in her knee stability, she's been playing without the brace. So coming off of that ACL, just mentally attacking the rim relentlessly, not being afraid, is why she has elevated her game this season versus last. Christmas with a great save. Skylar Diggins just missed her first free throw. Eight of nine from the line tonight. I don't think I've said Diggins Smith yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've been all, I don't think I've said it. I'm working on it. Lavender with the finish. LA has now made eight of their last 10 shots. Skyler, when she played at Notre Dame, was so great at drawing contact, getting to the line, doing more of that this year. She averages about six free throw attempts per game, and she's over that tonight. Gray and Gray. Ball stays on this end of the floor. Here's tonight's edition of Who Am I? Here's some clues for you. I have the same birthday as Clay Thompson. I have not missed a game in the last four seasons, and one of my biggest passions outside of basketball is jazz music. Cast your answer on Twitter with the hashtag Who Am I WNBA. We'll have the answer later. Some tweeting reveal. First correct answers, plural. We'll get your handles revealed later on, and you both got this right away, right? I oh. think so, but I might be thrown now by the last, by the clue of I haven't missed a game in I the know. last four years. Yeah, so I didn't get it until we got to the third one, but the second one threw me off a little bit. We'll see if Tisha Penichero is playing the former <laughs> WNBA great. The last uh, few times that we've done this has sent in an answer. She was correct on one of them and incorrect on um, another. So hey, Tisha, play along. <laughs> we need more former WNBA players to chime in. You can't just let Tisha have yeah. control over this. I mean, we need some of the some WNBA alumni competition going on. Chelsea Gray picks up the foul. Tisha Penichero, the most assists in the history of this league. And that's a player, Chelsea Gray, you know, from California, from Stockton. She said she watched Sacramento and was a big fan of Tisha Pinichero, another big point guard with great passing ability. Kayla Davis didn't take her long to shoot after she got into the game. And that is her first make of the day. 0 for 3 from the floor in the first half. Kayla averaging just under nine points per game. Second most for any rookie behind her teammate, Alicia Gray. 
Blumike posting up hard against Christmas Kelly, really wanting it. And Karima was able to knock it away. Five seconds left on the shot clock for LA. When we come back, Sparks leading by 14. As a professional basketball player, I want to be the best role model possible for the young. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now, Rima, you're going to have a tough assignment, you two, because they're going to go, they're going to put everything in the neck up. Everything in the neck up. Rima, I'm pressing the ball. Okay. Now, that's a good job pressing, okay? Keep the up. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, Chelsea. Chelsea's right here. Give me, uh, give me NECA right here. Give me, uh, As a professional basketball player, I want to be the best role model possible for the young girls, young boys looking up to us. For me, it's all about the importance of, of giving back. So I try to just pay it forward. It's so important to make an impact on the younger generation because we were once that young generation. We were the kids that had a dream. And now that I'm living out my dream, it's my chance, my opportunity to make sure that others can too. Back in Los Angeles, Minnesota at 9-0. Washington, the best team in the East, New York, starting to play better. And you see the cut line. Remember, just like uh, last year, the top eight teams are going to get into the playoffs regardless of conference. Still two through ten right now are only separated by a couple of games. So there's a lot of parity in this league when you eliminate number one and number 12 and, and how well Minnesota's playing and then how much San Antonio is struggling right now. Well, I think it's been tough for teams that have had to go on the road early. I mean, this LA Sparks team had a stretch of five of seven on the road to start. So when you're trying to get people back healthy, coming off of overseas obligations, getting that chemistry back, it's hard to do that on the road. And in that last huddle, we had a chance to listen, and Fred Williams was telling Kareem Christmas Kelly, be careful, they're going to start trying to get it to Ogumake, and they are absolutely trying to exploit that matchup. Ogumake has a few inches of size on Christmas Kelly. And Kareem just picked up the foul. And the smaller lineup was what helped Dallas in their win in Arlington. Fred Williams going with that here. Carson with the miss from outside, Tanaya Chong. Checking in, had a really good first half. Skyler, sweet little Euro step. Dallas putting a lot of pressure on LA's transition defense in this third quarter. Skyler Diggins-Smith with a team high 16 points tonight. 
And Karima Christmas Kelly has just picked up her second foul in the last minute. It's a handful. It's a handful trying to keep Ogumike out of the paint, out of a position where she can really be effective with the basketball. She's so active and is sheer want to. It's just desire. 99% of her game is desire. Good save by Lavender. Ogumike. I don't know if I've seen that part no. in her game. <laughs> Expanding her game every season, now in her sixth year out of Stanford. MVP led her team in points, rebounds, and blocks last year. And won a title. See the trap off of the hard hedge on Skylar Diggins. They want the ball out of her hands. Gray putting her head down and driving it against the rookie. The skill of Neka Ogwumike, the footwork, the finish. We talk about how difficult she is on the block. Well, she's got a great first step, just a little back. Step back move, I mean, her game is so nice and it's evolved throughout the course of her career here. You know, she used to just be, get on the block, make a, make a move and she's really expanded her game this year. She's added uh, the three pointer a little bit more. We haven't seen that much tonight, but she's added that to her game. And a lot of these players, including Neta, you know, they work on various things when they go overseas. She won a, a EuroLeague championship alongside Epiphany Prince and, and Angel McCautry. But every team she's been on, she talks about, you know, just your role is different. It gives you a chance to get better. Gray hits two free throws. Kayla Thornton, three personal fouls now for Dallas player that Fred Williams was hoping could really contribute there. She is with the ball in her hands. That's a tough shot. That's a tough shot, especially with Lavender's hand right on her. Good ball movement, sets up Beard. And they give her credit for three. And credit Odyssey Sims because she could have taken a look at the basket, instead made the extra pass. Nice unselfish play. Odyssey Sims, who had been starting with Dallas coming off the bench. Minutes about 23 a game. LA on a 7 0 run, and now their biggest lead of the night against Dallas. ESPN's coverage of the WNBA is brought to you by Trulia, where you can find the right house and neighborhood for you. And Steel. Visit your local Steel dealer today. But I will, I will get away from the game a little bit. Um, I'll probably watch some WNBA games, though. I can't get away from. I probably watch probably some tournaments this this summer. So I'll be a part of the game. But as far as me actually playing. Uh, but I will, I will get away from the game a little bit. Um, I'll probably watch some WNBA games, though. I can't get away from. I'll probably watch probably some tournaments this this summer. So I'll be a part of the game. But as far as me actually playing, I won't, I won't be a part of the game much this summer. How excited was everyone to hear <laughs> LeBron James say that? We're like, what game is he coming to? You know, trying to figure out when we may see him. But uh, I was talking to some of the players in, like Neko Gumake, who LeBron is her favorite player, and this smile on her face. She said, I was getting text messages from family and friends, and everyone said, did you hear what LeBron said? He's going to be watching the WNBA. So game respects game. And LeBron has a lot of respect for the WNBA and what these players do every night. Neck now on the bench for L.A. How about Los Angeles shooting 69% from the floor in this game? I mean, they've been really effective, and, you know, they've, they've been 
getting their scores by a lot of touches in the paint off of the dribble drive. You will shoot a high percentage when you make the extra pass and get touches in the paint, and that's what it's been for LA. Shot clock winding down for Parker. A little step back three. Skyler digging Smith, good hustle to get the rebound, and then it's taken away by Odyssey Sims. Skyler still on the court. Frustrating night for Skyler and the rest of the wings. He's been on the floor a few times tonight. Dallas, the youngest team in the league. Rookies getting all these minutes. Here's one of the veterans, Glory Johnson, called for the charge, drawn by Greg. And it's interesting you say that, Pam, because that's what I've been thinking tonight. You know, youth was on Dallas's side when they won in Arlington because of the fourth quarter. They had energy, they had stamina, they were still fresh late in the game against an older team. But tonight, some of the mistakes, some of the mental breakdowns, the lack of communication just remind you of how young this team really is. Lori Johnson was spectacular with the 24 points just a few days ago. How about just three tonight? So much of what she did in that game on Friday was energy, got to the offensive glass. The whole team was, was feeding off of their run, especially in the fourth quarter, feeding off of the crowd. They haven't been able to put together sustained runs in this game. Four points actually for Glory Johnson tonight. The 24 against LA was a season high on Friday. Contact, what have we got? A blocking foul on Beard. Good aggressive move there by Kayla Davis. As we were talking to her today, you know, asking her, I mean, she can do so many things at her size at 6'2", but what she felt like she could contribute to the WNBA, and she said, I'm still figuring it out, you know? Just trying to make the right decisions in the right situations, and, and still just getting a feel for where she can have success in this league. But the sky's the limit, in my opinion. I said this on draft night. Uh, she'll be an all-star in this league one day. And also on draft night, surprised that she dropped all the way to 10th. Very. I think she was, too. She told us that she does use that as incentive when she goes out there. Bit of an off night tonight, but Davis. Weak side curl. Part of this young up and coming Dallas team. She's just one of five from the floor this evening. Connor Williams. Lavender. And more passing around the perimeter for LA, but Williams couldn't get it to fall. Came up empty, but it was a great possession. Great communication, ball movement. Williams and Sims, two of the new pieces for this LA team. Odyssey does it again. A circus shot, count it. Sims fouled and put it home. And this is what she brings to the LA Sparks team. You get things started on the defensive end. She gets the steal. Going the other way, she's a lefty to her strong side. She knew the contact was coming. She put her right hand out to help absorb it. But with her frame, you'll see her shoulders when she gets to the free throw line. She can absorb that contact and still finish. And that's the kind of defense we saw her play at Baylor. You know, we haven't seen her really play with that type of pressure and intensity. And she's talked about how Elena Beard has been a big part of that, helping her to grow, get comfortable in the WNBA on defense. And who better to have than Elena? 21-point lead matches LA's largest lead in any game this season. And Elena Beard, up 21, had runs to the other end of the court. And she just has been given a technical foul. I understand her frustration. She got a foul called on her that was questionable. And it was because of sheer effort. She came around and did a great job helping out on Glory Johnson, exerted a lot of energy to be in the right spot. So there's a frustration when you get, the, when you get a foul called and you don't think it's just. So Gray heads to the free throw line. And she ran into the backcourt, one would suppose, just so maybe they wouldn't see her be upset. And now Johnson shooting the free throws. And you're, 
Boy, Beard, so competitive, so selfless. Just wants to win. Finally got her first WNBA championship last year at a terrific finals for this team after really her career seemed just a couple of years ago to be, you know, petering out. I'm in awe of what she can do at her age with her injury history. It's tremendous. So watch, Beard. She comes from the weak side. It looks like she gets all ball. And I think the biggest frustration is just it was a great help defense, you know, energy kind of a play. And she takes so much pride in her defense. Yeah. I mean, so much pride in it. So a call like that when she felt like there was no foul there for player, her magnitude could definitely be frustrating. Seventh in WNBA history in steals is Elena Beard. Let's see if she gets a little fired up on the other end. Blocking foul as two Dallas Wings player hit the deck. And they give it to Christmas Kelly, who has picked up three fouls all in this quarter. We had a chance to talk to Elena Beard before the game. Oh boy, she's a player who was more, thought it was more important to keep this group together than to take care of her contract. She went in and talked to Penny Toller, and she said, get everybody else's deal done, and I'll take what's left. I mean, that's just a ridiculous and an absolute embodiment of what it means to be a team player who, who puts championships above self. It's the first time I've ever heard of anybody doing that. You did that with ESPN, right? I, well, I wanted to make sure you were taken care of. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Shot clock winding down. Chong throws it up. And the LA Sparks, leading by 13 at the half, have expend, extended it up to 20. This is an LA team that has so much balance. Yes, they have superstars who can get it done. Candace Parker is one going to the left hand. And their MVP from a season ago, Neka Agwumake finishing. Chelsea Gray hitting from the outside. And the newcomer, Odyssey Sims, take that, L.A. Sorry about this, I don't know what's going on. Welcome back to L.A. I am here with Sparks head coach Brian Agler. Coach, you have a big lead in this game, but in your loss at Dallas, they were able to come back in the fourth quarter. How do you keep that from happening again? They can uh, they can score in bunches. They're really aggressive going the rim. They're aggressive defensively. They try to create steals. So, you know, we have to be really efficient with the basketball, but you also can't play on your heels. you got to stay proactive in trying to score and keep pushing them back to the rim. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Luciano. Executing. Defensive stops, execution, efficient. You stay. Honestly, you stay. Raquana, you're out. You red action, Jantel. You have a big lead in this game, but in your loss at Dallas, they were able to come back in the fourth quarter. How do you keep that from happening again? They can uh, they can score in bunches. They're really aggressive going the rim. They're aggressive. Defense. Welcome back to L.
Welcome back to L.A. I am here with Sparks head coach Brian Agler. Coach, you have a big lead in this game, but in your loss at Dallas, they were able to come back in the fourth quarter. How do you keep that from happening again? They can uh, they can score in bunches. They're really aggressive going on the rim. They're aggressive defensively. They try to create steals. So, you know, we have to be really efficient with the basketball, but you also can't play on your heels. you got to stay proactive in trying to score and keep pushing them back to the rim. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Tom. Last time they played on Friday, L.A. had a 14-point lead, and they ended up losing that game, outscored by 13 in the fourth quarter, but this is a 20-point advantage now. Yeah, and Dallas on that possession, extending the defense, and they're going to have to get stops. They're going to have to force turnovers, but L.A. right now in this game so far, only nine turnovers. They've taken care of the basketball. Yeah, Dallas just one step, step slow on their defensive rotations, and L.A. will make you pay because they have so many efficient shooters on the floor. Wow, what a pass. Williams to Lavender, who blew it. And rarely does she miss in a situation like that. Missed by Kayla Davis, and the ball goes over to the Sparks. Also, plus 24 points in the paint. Dallas missed some layups back in the first quarter, got them back on their heels. And now they've gone oh, five and a half minutes without a field goal. Gray with the miss. Good box out by Parker. Beer tried to draw the foul. They called the blocking. Oh, oh, that, that, that's, that's easy, a that, no call. That, yeah, if you're going to call anything, it's an offense foul. But I completely agree with you, Pam. That should be a no call. I mean, Elena Beard is moving her feet. She's got legal guarding position, gets to the spot. Yeah, that's a no call right there. Or a charge. But. One thing, you know, we, we see happen in basketball, it's a contact sport. And not all contact is a foul. Right. Including that clear example. <laughs> just trying to offer you know, a little supportive. <laughs> and I, I, I just, you know, Elena Beard works so hard on the defensive end, and, and for her to get a couple of those fouls, we talked about the one earlier too, which was fouled by the technical because she didn't agree. I feel bad for players when they exert that kind of energy and, and play such good defense and, and get called for a questionable foul. Underneath, Candace Parker can't get it to go. Beard now sitting on the bench. Parker came away with a smile like, I thought I had more lip than my legs. Yeah, she, thought she, had, she <laughs> thought she had more air time there. Laissance with her first basket of the second half. It's that's, her first three. It's 6'5", a big player, but that's her game. Her pick and pop and to take three. She's the best three-point shooter in terms of percentage on the Dallas team. Lost Parker on the perimeter, makes her pay. Enough lift in her legs on that one, though. The child. She did. She did. And she got, she got some good bend in her knees on that too. Kayla Davis coming back the other way. And we see just her ability off the bounce. She can stretch the defense. Again, six-two. She has all the tools. Very versatile. Just continuing that transition into the WNBA. Gray passes up the three. And Agumake with a little step away. That'll break your back defensively mm -hmm. to play for almost the entirety of the shot clock and then still give up two. Smart basketball by LA. Plaisance able to get inside of Agumake for the putback. And I thought Teresa Plaisance played well early in the game doing that, getting baskets around the rim, but Fred Williams deciding to go small, understandably for defensive purposes, but on the offensive end, she, she's she been a lot of help. Parker gets it inside to Abumake, who's was able to spin around and is found by Davis. We 
are seeing Candace Parker and Neka Ogumake on the offensive end. Their versatility. Both players have size, but they've got face-up game right here. Neka taking her time with the ball fake and the fadeaway. There just really isn't a lot of things that those two players can't do on the basketball court when it comes to offense. And again, that growth in chemistry, the leadership that they showed throughout the finals last season. I mean, when you're getting ready to play the LA Sparks, you're spending a majority of your time trying to figure out how you can slow down those two players. NECA was the MVP of the season, and Candace Parker, the most outstanding player of the finals. As Candace got that elusive first championship. Williams with the reach in. That's the thing where, where Davis uh, ex has, can expand her game and get more comfortable as well as she's got nice size, as you were talking about with China at 6'2", and she's going to have times in games where she has a smaller defender. Smart decision to get on the block. She's got good post moves. We saw her do that in college as well. More WNBA games coming your way on Sunday. A triple header on NBA TV starting at 3 Eastern. Dallas, this Dallas team in Washington, followed by Phoenix at L.A and San Antonio at Seattle. And then a week from Friday, Washington at Minnesota on ESPN2 at 8 Eastern time. Go to WNBA.com or access the WNBA app. A Father's Day triple header. It's Father's Day this Sunday, right? That yes, is, it is. That is a true fact, yes. My dad's probably watching right now. He'll be watching on Sunday. He watches more WNBA than I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot, then. Oh, yeah. He's all over it. And another whistle. We're going to take a break. L.A. with a sizable lead over Dallas. ESPN's coverage of the WNBA is brought to you by Verizon. Not just Unlimited, Verizon Unlimited. And Taco Bell's new Naked Chicken Chips.
Time now to revisit tonight's Who Am I? I have the same birthday as Clay Thompson. Not missed a game in the last four seasons and have a big passion for jazz outside of basketball. And the answer is, oh, a little curveball. Not a player, but the head coach. That's a knuckleball. Big time. <laughs> the music that you're hearing at home is a track called Rock from Fred Williams' personal jazz collection. Or Freddie Bass, as he is known. He can play that's what? Him, that's everything. him playing the music. Yeah, right he's self-taught. Bass guitar, electric guitar, piano. Taught there, himself to play by ear. There's some of the winners, including, can it be Tisha Penichero? Again. <laughs> the flyest hoopa. Pam or do me this just one treat. T Magic W. And uh and Ad Admiral Nita. Can can you please just say the flyest hoopa? Come on, Pam. The flyest hoopa. Good uh, job. Got it right. That was actually up for back. That was <laughs> as great as I thought it would be, is well, what it was. But we hear that Holly Rowe got it, did not get it correct. And you know who else got it wrong? Swin Cash. Swin, <laughs> come on. First of all, Swin's tweeting in studio, she, you know. Holly Rose watching the game. They got it wrong. I bet they both said Essence Carson. Yeah, well, and actually, let's go back. Tisha got it right on her second guess. But Rebecca <laughs> Rebecca didn't get it right either. <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> that is true. We are we are. Did bucks. you get it right? You don't know I that, I, that I, I am the fly. So we're one for three. Oh, that's you? Yeah, yeah, that's me. <laughs> you tweeted and then threw us off by giving us a wrong answer. Yeah. Right. Slight of hand. Meanwhile, Kayla Davis is going to go to the free throw the line. Yes. As Dallas has not led in this game. They trailed by as many as 22. Certainly not the effort or the outcome that Fred Williams was anticipating, especially after they were able to beat L.A. and Dallas on Friday. Elena Beard back into the game. Well, these are valuable minutes. You know, you look at Kayla Davis, she's turned it on in the last few minutes. It may not make a big difference in the final score of this game, but you need these young players to get out here, get experience in this league, and be put in different situations that'll help their confidence as the season goes on. Shot clock, dying. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to add this. I just got a text from Holly Rowe, and uh, <laughs> it's under protest oh. because she said it's supposed to be a player, not a coach. Oh. And uh, so the who am I <laughs> is officially under protest tonight. <laughs> she uh -oh. thinks it should be invalid. <laughs> Apparently the bylaws say it doesn't have to be a player, <laughs> but we'll go to the rule book. Holly will find something. She'll be scouring over all of our, our previous games, trying to find someone that slipped right. up and said it was a player. And that basket by Karima Christmas Kelly, her first points of the night. Second leading scorer on this Dallas team. Parker, over play songs. Nailed it. You know, Dallas has really struggled for much of this game on both ends of the floor. We've talked about this, but this is the youngest team in the league. They've got a bunch of rookies on the roster. You see the nice drive lefty by Skylar Diggins. And, and this is a team that's going to have those growing pains this year. It, it's that simple. I mean, their goal is to make the playoffs, but this is a team that's built pretty well for the future. Uh, but they, they've had some struggles against a team that has a lot of experience, championship experience with LA. So far this season, they have played the toughest schedule in the league, two in a row for Christmas Kelly. And we already mentioned earlier that Courtney Paris is out with a knee injury, and Ariel Powers had hip surgery on a torn labrum. And those are a couple of players that they certainly are missing. Ariel had surgery at the end of November. They're hoping to get her back sometime this year, but that might not happen. And for Dallas to really reach their potential, you know, and Rebecca, you mentioned it, they definitely have to grow on the defensive end, but there's so much pressure on their guards to defend one-on-one -on -one because they don't have anyone to protect the rim. At 6'5", Plaisance is big, but she's not a shot blocker. No. Good effort by Skyler Diggins Smith to get it into Glory Johnson. Allison's next game will be at home against New York, then they go to Washington. Schedule not getting any easier. 
and the whistle. That will bring us to a break. When we come back, we will talk about our next WNBA telecast. Dallas has scored the last seven points, but still down. Maya is such a competitor. She gets her team to play on that high level every single night, and it's because Maya is just the horse that's driving them. Maya Moore gets it to go down. Elena is someone that poses a big problem. You know, it's, it's hard to rattle her, it's hard to shake her. Once she gets to her spots, she's one of the most consistent finishers that we've seen in a really long time. She's impressive. You're never going to stop her. You just have to hope to contain her the best you can. Oh, look at that. Defending. Post players, you're up here. They're standing right here, and you're standing right behind them, doing not doing a damn thing. They're just turning the corner and shooting layups. Maya is such a competitor. She gets her team to play on that high level every single night, and because Maya is just the horse that's driving them. Maya Moore gets it to go down. Elena is someone that poses a big problem. You know, it's, it's hard to rattle her, it's hard to shake her. Once she gets to her spots, she's one of the most consistent finishers that we've seen in a really long time. She's impressive. You're never going to stop her. You just have to hope to contain her the best you can. Oh, look at that. What a matchup that will be. Elena Deladon and Maya Moore, a couple of Former MVPs, that's our next ESPN2 game coming your way on June 23rd at 8 Eastern time from St. Paul. Washington playing the best basketball in the East so far, and Minnesota still unbeaten. So a nice run here by Dallas has cut it down to a dozen, make it 15. Or 14, that's a long two. Yeah, Dallas has scored 22 points already in this fourth quarter. Brian Adler. Can't be happy with that. We'll see what they do in this last two minutes. Beard gets the rebound off the Glory Johnson miss. Eight players have gotten into the game for the Sparks. We've not seen Sidney Weiss, a rookie out of Oregon State, who got off to a blazing start this season. Johnson, nice turnover. Davis with the miss, Glory follows it up and gets fouled. Glory Johnson's relentless and can be relentless on, on the glass. She and Neko Gumake are two of the elite athletes in this league, especially at that power forward position. At that time, she just <laughs> continued to attack the rim. Third foul on Odyssey Sims. I mean, when you play against Glory Johnson, you'll know it the next day. I mean, you're going to come away <laughs> sore. I have a couple bruises. She's so physical. And her frame isn't one where you would just expect her to be physical because she's lean, but she knows how to use it. 
Well, the latest news on the WNBA and women's sports. Log on to ESPNW. Some of the headlines. Cheryl Swoops talks about her, the inspiration she got from her late mother and Chelsea Gray growing into one of the best point guards in the WNBA. That's all on ESPNW.com. Do you agree with that assessment about Chelsea Gray? She's turning into one of the best in the league? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, look at her performance in the finals last season, and in particular, you know, game five down the stretch. I mean, she went on a personal run. She's not afraid of pressure. She is becoming a better leader. She just really has to continue to work on her defense. I mean, that's the biggest area of improvement, and Brian Agler would agree. Shot clock winding down for Odyssey, who got bottled up, had to put it up. Chelsea Gray in game four of the finals had 20 points, and you mentioned the run. At one point, 11 straight points she scored in game five. In that classic series against Minnesota. So Chelsea Gray, the breakout season, and with Kiersey Tolliver signing with Washington, her chance to step into the starting lineup, and she's flourished. Man, there's been a lot of fouls in this game. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the hallmark of, of really good L.A. offensive basketball is unselfish play, balanced scoring, high assists. This is a team, when they're playing at their best, they are making the extra pass. We saw it in stretches tonight. We saw it throughout the course of the finals last year. Well, and what they're missing with Christy Tolliver, I think Odyssey will make up for with her defensive pressure. I mean, you can get... She can easily get two or three baskets a game of points off turnovers, just getting steals, getting the transition. And then she has a three-point shot as well. It hasn't showed up really in the WNBA, but we remember at Baylor, I mean, she's got three-point range. And so as she gets comfortable there, starting on the defensive end, she can be a difference maker. Yeah, I think that the, the area that L.A. misses Tolliver right now is more in three-point shooting. For sure. Chelsea Gray has just picked up her fifth personal foul. As we go to a minute six left to go in this game. Dallas not giving in in the fourth quarter, cutting it down now to 10 points. We're seeing crazier things happen. A make here, it's a three possession ball game. They're digging Smith now with 20 points and seven assists to go along with six rebounds. So a good line for Schuyler and Fred Williams still coaching them up. After this is a 12 to two run. And so much of it has come by getting to the free throw line. I mean, that, that's yeah. what you do when, when the clock is not your friend. You're trying to cut into the lead. You get to the place where you can make, get points w without the clock moving. And, and Dallas has done a really nice job of that. It's come from attacking the rim. And Dallas tonight is 21 of 28 from the free throw line. All right, Elena, you have it out here. Give me NECA, Jantel, Odyssey, Chelsea. Back, you said how Sims, or uh, uh, Gray, whoever's in there, I don't know, I got a point. Yeah, but at the ball, I want her on the ball. As soon as we get in, we're going hard trap first, and then, you know, for the steal. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Fred Williams uh, coached up his team, Pam Ward, along with Rebecca Lovo, and with China Robinson. You, know, you heard Fred Williams telling his team, as soon as they get the ball in, go for the steal, go for the hard trap, go for the steal, and then if you don't get it, you're going to have to start fouling. Yeah, they're still very much playing with a lot of energy in this game and trying to close the gap here, but they do have to steal some possessions, um, and L.A.'s going to have to miss some free throws. Dallas, in fact, leads the league in getting to the line, just about 27 free throw attempts per game, and they're at 28 tonight. L.A.? First three quarters, 40 points in the paint, zero here in the fourth quarter where Dallas has made a run. Took a while to call the foul. Yeah, I thought Skyler Diggins had a pretty good tie up there. So did she, judging by her reaction. Eight times, blowing the ball out of bounds. 
Bridget Pettis and Taj McWilliams Franklin, the assistant coaches for Fred. Taj had a quite a career in the league. Now on the bench for Dallas. It's good to see her back involved in, in, in the WNBA. She has so much wisdom. I remember when she was with the Minnesota Lynx, always teaching. Um, and, you know, Bridget Pettis, when it comes to player development, you'd be hard pressed to find a, a better WNBA coach that, in terms of just one on one skill set, gets in the gym with players. Skylar Diggins talks all the time about how she has helped her grow her game. So, to have two players that know what it's like to play in this league, it's a big asset for Fred Williams. Time Dallas. takes four. another time four. out. Four. Lock in, lock in. Imagine Fred Williams drawing something up for his club right now. Down 11, the way LA is shooting free throws. I would one. start looking to one. take threes. Oftentimes in this situation, you say, we all right, we'll go in and get the two, but one. LA's okay. been too effective on the free here. throw line. One. Go away. Come on, Be available. Here we go. Elsa Gray has been hurting Dallas all night. Yeah, looking to take that next step in her career. We're looking sharp early on in the season. I mean, she's been in attack mode. Yeah, she really never let up in terms of her ability to get to the rim and then her teammates finding her, showing the versatility in her game. And with her size and her skill set and her basketball IQ, I mean, the sky is really the limit for Chelsea. Came over to LA that trade with Connecticut. And it's really, things have really worked out for her here in Los Angeles. Skyler scores again. Skyler's 22 points, just one off her season high. She had 23 against Washington earlier this year. And now Raquana Williams' turn to shoot free throws, her first trip to the line. And that's the player you wanted to foul. I mean, she hasn't hit a free throw. She has not been affected from the field. Her first point of the game, and Everybody Dallas here. takes its final timeout. Time teaching right, moments, right, you know, for Fred that. Williams and his team. You're gonna be here. You need to be standing. You come up. Okay. Okay? Use it yet. Okay? Here we go. You got the ball out. Get it on three, one, two, three, go. Nope. You get it. Better get on the turn. Here we go. is led by as many as 22 points in this game. Now down to 10. Time running out for Dallas. They don't have any more timeouts, and that's a new season high for Skyler. Williams trying to outrun Plaisance and almost got away from her. And that sends Williams right back to the free throw line. Williams, who played three seasons, four seasons with this franchise when it was in Tulsa. Sat out last season with injury, and I mean, this is a young woman that can put up a lot of points in a little bit of time. She can create her own shot. You know, she's been off, but if she gets going and starts to find her confidence, that's another level for LA's offense. Skyler again. And an eight point lead and a timeout taken by Brian Agler, who's not happy with what he has seen here in the fourth quarter. Well, championship teams need to put their opponents away, and LA had a few opportunities to do that and simply didn't. 
and let Dallas continue to hang around. So we're, they're in this situation now. And Brian Edward never takes his foot off the gas. For Los Angeles, some of the things they've done right, sharing the basketball. Well, when they're effective, that's what they do. They make the extra pass to get players open looks. They have such great spacing on the offensive end. Well, there's always going to be spacing when you're running the floor. But you see the space that there is in the lane because of the type of offense they run. They have five players around the perimeter. There's room to cut through. They find those players open. Next game, San Antonio. Then a big one against Phoenix here on Sunday for the Sparks, who are, are about to go to six and three on the season. If and when the foul fest ends. Chelsea Gray heading to the free throw line. And in case you're wondering when they play Minnesota for the first time, and actually it's gonna take them a while. About July 6th, first time they played Minnesota this year. We'll be covering that game on ESPN too. In St. Paul. In St. Paul, which is a cool town. I love it. Nothing against Minneapolis, but a whole different vibe. And St. Paul and the fans certainly have had no trouble packing that place. And that's a foul as Lavender got way, way too close to Skyler who hits the deck again. But it's become just exchanging baskets yeah. for Dallas and LA. So, I mean, at some point, especially without any timeouts left to advance the basketball, the clock is not your friend. You're gonna have to take some threes. Two shots come upcoming for Skyler. And this has to be frustrating for Brian Agler, because you got to think the one thing he's telling his players, don't foul, don't stop the clock. Skyler has 20 of her 28 points in this half. 12 of them for the game coming from the free throw line. Plaisons gets Williams again. That's right. That's right, T. So, and this is smart by Brian Agler as well to put Raquana Williams in a situation where, you know, she can get fouled, get to the free throw line, try to get her touch. She's been off, you know, just in terms of her start with this team. She's been off from the field in general and hasn't really found her rhythm on the offensive end. And these moments can help you. One thing Coach Agler told us what he's has to figure out how to use Raquana Williams, who is trying to work her way into this rotation. Pretty much the entire bench from last year is gone. Remember for LA, they had all those Europeans on the floor who did not get a lot of playing time, but were great locker room players. Yep. Dublovich, the rest of them have moved on. And how critical was their bench? You know, according to the starters last season in that championship run, they said, you know, our bench just gives us so much energy. Those players weren't playing a lot of minutes, but it was just, they were enthusiastic. They were confident in what was happening on the floor. And, and that helped LA a lot. So Los Angeles gonna win at 97-87. A little sloppy at times. Brian Agler, no doubt, gonna work on some things. But the Sparks, the defending champions, go to six and three on the season. Dallas falls to four and seven. We'll see you Friday, June 23rd, as Washington takes on unbeaten Minnesota. Coming up next, 30 for 30, the Celtics and the Lakers for Rebecca Lobo and LaChina Robinson. I'm Pam Ward, as we say so long from Los Angeles. The champs take down Dallas.
Can you guys hear me? Okay. Okay. NECA, your team lost to Dallas just a few days ago. You get the win tonight at home. What was the difference? Defense. You know, um, we wanted to come out and be as sound as we could on defense. And I think we did a, a much better job. Maybe not for the full 40 minutes. Second quarter wasn't so good, but uh, we were able to close it out. On the offensive end, you guys shot 57% from the field, very balanced contributions. What is the key to what you guys were able to do on the offensive end? Moving our bodies and moving the ball, not rushing. Um, I think also getting stops helps us get more controlled offensive possessions. And, um, you know, you see what Chelsea can do, what Odyssey can do getting in. And then when we hit shots uh, like Gentel and CP were doing, we're able to get a balanced offense. Your leadership was so key in this team's run to a championship last season. From the outside looking in, you know, you look at your record and people are saying, can the Sparks get back to that level of play? What is it going to take for this team to kind of get to where you are? It's going to take focus. Yeah, focus and um, just an appetite to get better. You know, I think we really want to be great. And uh, that's something that we're, we're looking to identify right now. Thank you, Neka. Thanks, China. I couldn't hear you if you wanted something else, Ian, but she's gone. I'm okay. Yes, we're good. Thank you. What were you going to tell me? What were you? Oh. Oh, stop. You know what? Bye. <laughs> Thanks, guys.